Hi, this is Jean and Colleen from the Goldstein Museum of Design. And today we're here to show you some objects from the 1920s. While these are not an ensemble together, they do represent main styles from that era. We have two hats, a pair of shoes, and a dress to show you. So today I'm showing you two versions of a style of hat called the cloche, which means bell in French. And you can see they are somewhat bell shaped. Now hats have been reducing in size since the 1910s when they were absolutely enormous. Um, and these were much more conducive with the short hairstyles of the 1920s. They were worn down, as you can see on the center of there, very low towards the eyebrows. So it's a very snug fitting low hat. You can see there is a brim, but it's just very slightly flared out and has top stitching. And the top stitching pattern on, uh, on the center hat is in a strong geometric triangular form, which would have been indicative of the Art Deco period. And certainly these would have dated to kind of the mid 1920s. Now the one on, the, on your left here is made from Devereux, which is a burnout velvet fabric. So if you look closely, you'd be able to see that there were some raised areas that looked kind of velvety while other areas kind of fell away. For both hats, also if you looked very closely, you'd see that the fabric was a, a kind of used on the bias because it's much easier to wrap a round portion of a hat with bias fabric than if it's on grain. It has a little more to give. And then finally on the right we have a pair of shoes from the 1920s. These date to the later 1920s and have what's called a knock-on heel, which is a wood-covered heel. Um, which kind of resembles a Louis heel with a you know a slight flare, but it's pretty tame actually. It also has a buckle on the center front strap that is uh, echoes Art Deco. You know it uses kind of a geometric form of faceted glass bead that's set within the buckle itself. Now we're going to look at this evening dress that's dated between 1920 and 1925. This dress is made from silk crepe and it features elaborate beadwork and embroidery. The desired silhouette in the 1920s was a tubular straight line shape with a flat bosom, narrow hips, and a dropped waist or no waistline emphasis at all. In the early 1920s, dress lengths were around ankle length, similar to this dress, but the hem height gradually moved upward in the mid 1920s and we have evidence that the hem on this dress was taken up at some point in time to meet, the, meet those higher hemlines and I will show you that in a little bit. This silhouette is a big departure from the S-shaped silhouette in the Edwardian period of the early 1900s and the constricting multi-layer dresses of the 1800s. The focus here was on simplicity in dressing as a result of World War I and a rejection of formality, an emphasis on comfort, lightness, and a more natural body shape. The undergarments that would have been worn with this dress to create the tubular silhouette were combination undergarments that combined a camisole and panties. Over that, there would have been a straight cut slip and then the outer garment. Corsets might have still been worn at this time by some woman to help create the flat straight silhouette, especially if they had a larger bust. Um, also worn were garter belts or garters as part of a corset to help hold up stockings that were necessary for women to wear at this time. So now let's talk about the fun details of this dress. So this is a one piece dress which was popular in the 1920s because it created that straight tubular silhouette that was so desired. This dress is made from an ivory silk crepe for the main body, but then also features a heavier gold fabric that's an applique towards the hem. The neckline is a U-shaped neckline, which was popular in the 1920s. And you notice that this dress is sleeveless Again, also popular in the 1920s, especially for evening dresses meant for dancing. We do have some soft fullness that has been added to the dress. We have some shearing along the shoulder seams. Then working our way down, you'll notice there is no waist seam on this dress. Instead, to add a little bit of fullness to the skirt for dancing, we have some shearing and gathering right here at the hip line. And this is also accented by these flowers that have been added at the hips with a long beaded tassel. As you can imagine, the wearer wearing this dress and dancing 
these beaded tassels and flowers would have really added a lot of nice movement and emphasis to the dress. Now you will notice um, that there are a set of snaps next to these flowers. There's ones on the front and then also on the back side. And we're not certain the purpose of these snaps. Um, that it's suspected that they might have been added at a later point in time in order to take in the waistline of this dress just slightly for potentially a different wear or to just change up the style a bit. So these snaps just snap to themselves and then would have been concealed by the flower. Moving on down to the hem. So I'm gonna go into some more detail about all this embroidery and beadwork, but you can see we've added this beautiful gold applique and then the hem has been heavily beaded. There's also evidence, again, that this dress has been altered at some point in time. You can see this very strong crease line that runs across the hem. Um, it's indicate, this indicates that potentially this dress was shortened at some point in time in order to meet the higher hemlines later on in the 1920s. Because of how the hem is finished at the bottom here with beading, you wouldn't be able to just take this up and shorten it. So it's probable that this whole dress was folded up and then tacked at a higher length in order to meet shorter hemlines. Other evidence of this is also seen on the slip. So there is a half slip that attaches at the hip line where these flowers are and goes to the hem of the dress. Uh, this slip also seems to have been taken up and is still taken up. Uh, you can see that there's a sort of additional uh, pleat in the slip that would have shortened it in order to meet the shorter hemline when the hem was taken up on this dress. You can also even see some remaining threads from potentially where the dress hemline was shortened at some point in time. So oftentimes historic garments have evidence of alterations that were made to them um, in order to be used in different times or for different styles and for different silhouettes. You'll also notice in a few places that we do have some staining, and that is very common on historic dresses. You can see some staining, some wear and tear from the wearer, uh, especially armholes. You can see some staining as well um, from body sweat from when you would be wearing this dress. Now I'm not gonna show you the back of this dress because it is in fact um, basically identical to the front of the dress. So it features a very similar pattern similar at the hem especially. Uh, the only difference is that the beading here, instead of stopping at the bust line, goes all the way up to the shoulder seams. And the last thing to note on this dress is that there is no closure for it. So to get into this dress, you would have just slipped it on over your head. Uh, and this is because it is a very straight tubular silhouette. Uh, it's very easy to get on and off. So let's dive in to the beautiful embroidery and beadwork that's on this dress. Heavy beading and embroidery was common in the 1920s, and motifs often represented the Art Deco movement with geometric forms and lines, uh, like you can see on this dress. And beading and embroidery, while frequently was all over dresses, um, more commonly was concentrated on the lower half of the dress and towards the hem, like you see on this dress here. And because of all of this beadwork and embroidery, these dresses were actually very heavy. You know, it looks really lightweight, it's made in a light silk crepe, and it was meant to move while you were dancing, but in actuality, these dresses were um, quite heavy to wear. So this dress features abstract uh, curvilinear feather patterns that are made up of a combination of beading and embroidery. And this pattern really helps to draw your eye down the garment to the hip where you have these flowers and beaded tassels and down to the hem. So all of the beading, embroidery, and applique on this dress is hand sewn. So we'll start and we'll look at the top so you can see that we have beading and embroidery here along the armhole and then along the top of the dress. So here at the top of the dress we have gold thread embroidery intermixed with silver beads and that continues down into some abstract circles and feathers. We have these flowers like we mentioned earlier which have a combination of clear beads and silver beaded tassels. And then when we get down to the hem, we've added this heavier gold fabric that's been appliqued on top of the silk crepe. And here we have a flip in the embroidery thread. So now our embroidery thread is ivory. It's like an ivory pearl, which kind of matches back 
to the ivory of the fabric and we still have the silver beads. So overall we've kept the same color palette throughout of the gold, ivory, and silver. You can see lots of beautiful work here. Embroidery and beading mixed together. And then the hem also features beading all the way up the edge of the hem. So like we mentioned earlier, you would not be able to just sort of cut this hem and take it up if you needed to to change the length. They actually most likely had to fold up the entire end of the dress in order to take up the length. 